Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, once again, doing another movie review this week. This time it's a dark horror comedy filled with suspense that came out on March 19, 1999. Surprisingly enough, it's going to be celebrating its 20th anniversary once it turns it on Tuesday. Simply called Ravenous. Now, one thing I'd like to ask, was this supposed to be David Arquette right there? I mean, his character, I mean, trying to open his mouth. Because <laughs> this has got to be one of the shittiest DVD cover arts I've ever seen. But this is basically a reissue from 2005 of an old DVD release that came out the same year the film did. And it's a non-anamorphic release, That's which the aspect ratio is 2 by 35, the way the film was shot. But it does have features on the back, as you can see, with the cast included. You got free audio commentaries, um, deleted scene with commentary of director Antonio Bird, who's no longer with us. Um, you got photo galleries and production stills, and a theatrical trailer with a TV spot included. So it's all in there. Um, but there is a Blu-ray release that came out in 2014 by Screen Factory, part of the label from Shell Factory, that actually had an anamorphic widescreen high-definition transfer, which apparently got criticized by people saying that it's not the best transfer they ever got. Yeah, they, they had problems with it, because it was taken directly from an older master. Well, hey, it's better than nothing, I guess. But it did feature a new feature by... Uh, an interview with uh, Jeffrey Jones, the actor behind Beetlejuice, uh, Stay Tuned, um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, among others. Yeah, so he was in the film too. Basically explained about what was going on in the movie, on how they've shot this and everything. Uh, I don't have the Blu-ray. Uh, hopefully I will find it someday. Um, but I was lucky enough to pick this up at Goodwill for a good price. It was part of the purple uh, tax sale that they had. So it was only a dollar. It was worth it. Um, but again, I, I prefer this cover art better. I mean, it really suits its purpose. You know, with the scene selections here in the pictures. Also has an advertisement yeah, for all these uh, Fox DVDs. I'm not going to open that up. I think I already know. <laughs> um, and, um, yeah, this is what the DVD looks like. This is directly the original 1999 DVD release. So, it wasn't a re-release. They also had a, a theatrical poster that shows the, the picture of a mouth, but it looks like it's directly from a, like, from an alternative rock band from the 90s or some some grunge band or, or any of those uh, <laughs> those techno pop uh, bands that they got so that that creates a, a strange cover art <laughs> for a CD. That's what it looks like uh, when I saw the poster. And there was another poster where it shows three of the cast: yeah, Guy Pierce, Robert Carlyle, and David Arquette. That's all in the burial ground, filled with skeletons around. Which definitely suits the, the cover art way better. That's what it should have been because it definitely shows um, the act of cannibalism that was going around in the 1840s uh, California you know, during the, the war of between the Mexicans and the Americans. That was happening. Um, which also uh, is very similar to the Donner Party that was going on too. So there's like a lot of cannibals around. They, they eat the human flesh. But this was, of course, very humorous um, for its gruesome, gory subject matter that they went for. So they took the guts to make this. Sadly, this film was a troubled production um, behind uh, Fox 2000 Pictures, a yeah, production company from 20th Century Fox. Because the original director was uh, uh, Malcho... Uh, Manchevsky, um, yeah, he's the original director of the film, which he left production uh, after three weeks of shooting, 
you know, they're trying to figure out what location they had to shoot because they shot it in in Durango, Mexico, Slavkia, and even Prague. But he actually submitted news storyboards, which would have required two weeks of shooting. But uh, Laura Siskin, the executive behind Fox 2000, had Michael manage the production by voting his chosen technicians and casting against his wishes. So that's why you know they, they had a fight and he left the project before he got replaced by, get this, uh, Home Alone editor uh, Roger Gosnell, who later went on to direct the movie Never Been Kiss, also starred as David Arquette. Uh, but they couldn't get along with the director, you know, through the cast, so a better suggestion was made when Robert Carlyle, you know, the actor from the film, suggested uh, Antonio Bird, the uh, English um, producer and director behind films that um, she actually worked with, uh, with him, called uh, Priest and Face. And she also directed the movie Mad Love with Chris O'Donnell and Drew Barrymore. So that's her. Figure that you know she would be the right choice to take over, and she did a good job. Even though yes, she even did find out what was going on with the production value that was happening. So it's a shame, but at the same time, you know they they did the best they could. They they filmed everything. They did a lot of editing and all of that put together. They had to set up all the designs and all the sets put together to make it look as as it should. More um, Indian uh, type, yeah, because this was, uh, they had Native Americans um, during the land here in California. Plus the film was not a big hit at the box office. It actually flopped. Uh, only um, grossed to uh, over two uh, million dollars out of its 12 million budget, so yeah, that sucks. And it wasn't marketed very well either, too. I mean, it did have some TV spots uh, when it came out. I was in Oregon at the time when this movie came out, so I probably saw maybe a few TV spots, but not as much. I didn't see it in theaters. I wish I had, but at the time I was in, you know, middle school, and I didn't have time to see a movie these days. And we were very busy. I mean, sometimes we'd go out to see a movie. Other times we're just doing something else. And, but I did saw this on HBO a long time ago, and um, I enjoyed it. I mean, I love the cast, and I love the idea that they went for it. I mean, it is definitely uh, gory, but it really works. And I just wish this movie got more attention it deserves. So that's why it's considered to be criminally overlooked for its energy and style that went for it, so it looked like they were having fun when they did this. Um, so anyway, uh, let's get to the review. Uh, it stars Guy Pierce from LA Confidential, among others, Robert Carlyle from The Full Monty, as well as Face and Priest, and went on to do other movies afterwards, including the, the TV series Once Upon a Time on ABC. David Arquette uh, from Scream, as well as Never Been Kiss. Uh, Jeremy Davies, uh, Jeffrey Jones, uh, John Spencer, S uh, Stephen, Stephen Spinelli, was there? Stephen Spinella, Neil McDonald. Yes, the same actor who was in movies like Star Trek: First Contact. 88 minutes, even the, even Paul Blart's Mall Cop 2, yeah, that actor. Um, jo you're gonna love this, Joseph Running Fox. That's the name of the actor. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm Running Fox. <laughs> well, I know that, but that's the the name. Yeah, because my name is Joseph. Sheila Telsey. Bill uh, Buchtrup, Damien Delgato, and David Heyman. Yes, if you're familiar with David Heyman, who's not only the producer behind this movie, under his production, 
company Heyday Films. He's of course the producer behind the Harry Potter movies. Hard to believe. <laughs> this was before. <laughs> yeah. It's written by Ted Griffin and it's directed by Antonia Bird. Gave us those movies and TV shows and sadly no longer with us. Yeah, she passed away in 2013. The movie begins where we meet Captain John Boyd, who's played by Guy Pierce, who was fighting in the United States Army during the Mexican American War that was happening in the mid 1840s. He found his courage uh, in a battle by playing dead as the entire unit was massacred. So his body, along with the rest, are put inside a cart, taken directly to Mexican headquarters. Just as blood started to drip around and went straight into his mouth. In a moment of bravery that he had, Boy had seized the chance to capture all the Mexican headquarters, which gave him his heroism that earns the captain's promotion. But General Slauson learned that Caradice uh, through which victory became a achieve for him that he offered him to go to Fort Spencer a remote uh, military outpost that's run by uh, Colonel Hart who's played by Jeffrey Jones who uh, who's staffed by uh, a team of uh, misfits which includes uh, Private Toffler played by Jeremy Davies um, Private Cleves played by David Arquette Major Knox, played by Stephen Spinella, um, and even Private Reach, who's played by Neil McDonald, which also has the addition of Native American scout George and his sister Marfa, both played by Joseph Running Fox and Sheila Telsey. So shortly after um, Boyd had joined in, that's where we meet a frostbitten stranger by the name of Qualahan, who's played by um, Robert Carlyle, which he would later be known as Colonel Ives. You know, that was taken by the, the United States Army. But he actually describes how his wagon train became lost in the mountains, telling a hellish tale about as it seems to be, cannibalism that was going around. Colonel Ives had promised the party a short route to the Pacific uh, Ocean that was going around, but instead he had led them into a more circuitous route, which result in the party that, that got trapped into the snow for three months, but wracked by starvation, yes, they had to promote cannibalism which led to murder. So our rescue powder so our rescue party is assembled to get the survivors uh, to be safe but before they left they were being warned by George of the Rendingo myth that everyone who consumes uh, the flesh of their enemies takes the strength to become a demon that's cursed by insatiable hunger for more human flesh so this was part of that. So when the soldiers had reached uh, the party cave, Boyd and Rich had investigated what was going on, which that's where they discovered a lot of uh, corpse, all these skeletons around. Yeah, five of them to be exact. And realized that Cullohan Haxi had murdered all of them in his party. And that's when Callahan suddenly changes. So now he's becoming, you know, cannibalistic. So he's ready to actually go around the killings, the ones of killing the uh, hearts, uh, along with um, along with um, George, and uh, and was going after Toffler. So yes, he did kill them. 
and then he was ready to go after um, Reach and and Boyd, which led to a chase all the way down into the cliffside. So yes, um, so uh, Clohan threw an axe at him. He fell all the way down into the cliff, and and Boyd suddenly uh, jumps off the cliff, you know, trying to escape from. From Kalahan because he was ready to attack him because he had no other choice. But he actually made it through, going all the way down into the tree, into the ground. But it actually, uh, which actually caught his leg, you know, through the um, the vines. So he fell all the way down into the hill, you know, with um, <laughs> Reach. So yes, they, which apparently he did died, just. Well, he was about to die, but he was still alive, but then he he was being killed completely. So, Boyd had to lay down with him for the entire night. You know, I had to borrow his jacket to cover him, you know, because it's, it's really cold. And Apparently, um, he grabbed the axe from him and starts to cut him. You know, try to eat some human flesh. We don't see him much of him eating it, but he's just. But you basically imagine for yourself that he, that he actually did that. So he got out of there. He started limping, you know, because he got caught by uh, one of the vines that went straight into his leg. Got out. He became delirious and severely traumatized, and learned and returns to find out that he's being reinforced by. General Slauson um, and the detachment of the cavalry. So Cleves and Marfa, who were on the supply mission, sadly no one would believe in Boyd thinking that Colonel Hives is Callahan. So apparently, you know, he was the only one who could find out, so he's about to find a way to kill him by grabbing the knife and try to slit him. But, um, then uh, Marfa had found out that the animals and even Cleves were slaughtered, thinking that it was Boyd that did all this, that because of because he became a cannibalistic uh, man, that they had to arrest him, but he didn't do anything. But it actually turns out that it was Colonel Hart who just uh, who was uh, killed during the massacre, but it turns out that he was alive the whole time. But I guess it was through, um, you know, Callahan. So I guess he, he has survived through all of that. That actually helped him going around eating human flesh and and going after all the animals around. So Marfa suddenly left and trying to find the two uh, soldiers going around, you know, for help. And then, you know, Hard was about to explain to Boyd about. Yeah, you know, how did this happen? Um, Callahan also made some stew, you know, for Major Knox and, and him and everyone else, so that that way they get to try it for themselves, because, you know, they made it for meat, but it might be the meat that's directly for, for human flesh and stuff. So that causes Boyd to not only got stabbed, but suddenly begins to have some stew, you know, trying to try to get over that uh, that experience he had, you know, during the war. But it also led to a battle that was going around at the end when they were about to go after Marfa and the two soldiers. So Boyd suddenly uh, took the knife through uh, hard and decided and told him to kill him by slitting his throat and then that's when he had a fight uh, with Callahan that led to the bear trap that he set up. Definitely has that more intense feel to it and has an eerie score that that really <laughs> made this movie as suspenseful as it can be. But it does have a lot of humorous uh, dialogue that's that's set up um, through uh, you know Kalal, you know, playing the role as Callahan and so 
Um, yes, and I did remember uh, Toffler saying, He was licking me! Yeah, when uh, when he was uh, at the cave, yeah, he actually uh, he actually fell through the mountain, and which actually um, got him, which actually he got injured. So he was actually had to drink some uh, bourbon to help him, trying to heal his wounds. But yeah, Kalahan suddenly licks his blood, and yeah, that's how he became as as we speak. Um, and yes, there are a lot of humorous um, words coming from um, you know Kalahan. Um, I need to look for the like um, for example <laughs> um, like like at the end of the movie he says just when they set up the bear trap and killed both of them this is where he says that was very sneaky or even the scene where <laughs> he was about to shoot Toffler just when he killed um, George and and Hearts and he said the gun clicks and he says, well that was very annoying. <laughs> um, yeah, they, they got a lot of great quotes too. Um, <laughs> um, yes, his other quote I also love, I mean, when he was I, he's he, he a quote from um, Benjamin Franklin, you know, eat to live, don't live to eat. <laughs> okay, okay, I get, I get the idea. So, I mean, he has a stellar cast all the way around. They were all very good. Um, David Arquette, who just basically has a small role, um, was um, was rather strange, but hey, he was there. <laughs> and he just goes around, you know, all he acts, you know, all all high because you know he's <laughs> he's all drugged out and he likes to hang out with women a lot I mean but that's just the way he is um, uh, Major Knox um, acts all drunk you know the way he speaks um, Boyd of course um, is uh, very heroic um, you know, even though you know he's been suffering through all the cannibalistic that was going around that that got him, and you know he's he was having some weird visions when when he was actually having some meat, yeah, raw meat that's filled with blood around that caused him to throw up. So apparently he he wants to becoming a ravenous uh, creature later on. Like he was trying to imagine that he's going to be able to eat human flesh, but. Callahan, but Robert Carlyle is definitely one of his best performances to play uh, both Ives and Callahan together because it's basically the same person. You know, coming in with uh, his own sense of dialogue that's so memorable. Um, this is definitely an Oscar caliber performance right there. It really shows. Uh, Jeffrey Jones was very good too, and, and so is the rest. So. Um, Perfect location. I mean, it definitely feels uh, like this was 1840s, and you know, snow mountains around, and has a Native American land feel to it. So they really shot it right there. Wonderfully directed by Antonio Bird, who was a great director. Um, interesting enough, she was also vegan too. So I guess uh, even for her. I guess she was lucky to handle um, this particular material that that was going through. Yeah, because there were gore in the film. I mean, there was all blood. Not much, not as gory as you may think, but it does seem real, you know, realistic. All that blood dripping around. Even when they got stabbed a lot, the uh, blood started to come straight out of their mouths and all that. And all these traps that they had to set up. I've seen all these skeletons around everything I mean it's it's as gruesome as it can get yeah so well made great movie 
really enjoyed it. So anyway, bon appetit. <laughs> That's ravenous, and I give it four and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.